Welcome to the Sorrel Weed House. This was the first time that I was able to come to the Sorrel Weed House in Savannah, Georgia. This estate is known as one of the most haunted places in America, with a rich history, both cultural and paranormal. This was a compelling place to visit, with an abundance of stories, a multitude of deaths, and all kinds of paranormal activity that has been prevalent for years. Here is a look inside the historic mansion. This may have been my first time, but it is surely not the last. Definitely feels heavy up here. What is known about Maui is only folklore and none of the evidence can truly be substantiated. As the story goes, Molly was a slave owned by Frances Sorrell, who was the first owner of the estate. She was rumored to have relations with Mr. Sorrell, and it is unknown if these relations were consensual or not. Some time after they had become intimate, Sorrell's second wife, Matilda, caught Frances and Molly in the act. She was so distraught that she jumped from the second story balcony into the courtyard, ending her life. Not long after this incident, Molly too had reached the same fate, but her cause of death is unknown. Some say she did away with herself, and some say she was murdered. trying to gulp, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Hi, Molly. Just came to say hi. Oops. Oh, my. What the hell? Yo. You see this? Wait, she's seen by the windows a lot. Oh shit. Oh my God. And there's nothing around here. Uh, maybe. Yo, I did say hello. Maybe she's here. No, I'm away from that. That's still going crazy. Wow. Molly, I'd love to come see you again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Throughout the entire house, there have been reports of paranormal activity. The house was bought in the 1950s and turned into a dress shop, but they made one mistake while restoring the basement area. 
They tore out some of the ballast to open up the area for the shop, in turn ruining the supports of the building. When the floors were being renewed and dug up, revolutionary war artifacts were found buried, such as buttons, red cloth, and even a French cannonball, not to mention the remains of 12 bodies and possibly even more. The bones were going to be examined, but were chosen not to because of the cost, so they were once again interred into the ground from which they came. With all the readings I was able to get in this hallway, in the basement, in Molly's quarters, throughout the entire property, it really makes me wonder how many spirits linger here? How long have they been here? Do they listen to the stories that are being retold every day about their lives? As I look up the stairs here, I continue to get readings, and I can only imagine that someone, my feeling is Matilda, is at the top of the stairs watching. She has been, in fact, captured on film in numerous investigations conducted here, wearing a black antebellum dress, roaming the house and the grounds. I'll be sure to take a nighttime paranormal tour in hopes not only to see her, but any and all of the spirits who roam this place.
as you can see, I'm getting very high readings in this room. I imagine this room was used often and most likely carries a lot of energy based on my readings. Much of the furniture in the house was not original, but accurate to the era in which the mansion was originally constructed. Some of the paintings on the walls were also done by not only local artists, but students of Savannah College of Art and Design. The experience of stepping back in time and being surrounded by all of these ornate pieces was truly a surreal and fascinating experience. The mansion's design is based on the Greek revival style that became very popular in the southern states at the time. This elegant and classic look is timeless and stunning, a vision for the ages. In the other room, you can see a chain moving on the door, swinging back and forth. I don't know if it was a breeze or what. I'm not sure of the cause of it, but I thought it worth noting. As you can see here, the chain is swinging again. Now this is a minute or two after the first time I saw it. Still inconclusive. One thing that influences my passion for investigating is finding out the history and putting the puzzle together. Who am I communicating with? Do they need help? What do they want us to know? Can they see us? So many different questions and not having the answers is what it's all about. It keeps you thinking. There will always be unexplained events that will allow us to expand our thoughts and theorize about our very existence. If you have any theories you'd like to share, be sure to comment below and we can further share our thoughts with the paranormal and spiritual community. Thank you so much for watching Spirit Realm Investigations.